Hey, great pleasure to welcome uh, in three blues, three all blacks, Patrick Tupilotu, Caleb Clark, Mark Talea. Great to see you guys. Thanks for stopping in. Uh, let's get the uh, the medical ward out of the way first. Uh, Patrick, what's the situation with your uh, with your your knee, your latest injury? When can we expect to see you back? Uh, yeah, I've actually got a tear in my calf, so I actually don't know what the return to play is yet. It could be four, could be six weeks. So playing it by ear and just sort of rehabbing taking each day as it goes. So you'll stay in and around the team um, just while, while that rehab happens? Yeah. yeah. Can I take you back to the Super Rugby final? I know you've been asked this question a thousand times about your your miraculous recovery. We all thought you were going to be out for, for yeah. weeks. Um, can you give us some insight into how you came back so quickly? Um, I don't know. What do I say? World, car, world class uh, recovery <laughs> protocols. <isn't it? laughs> but uh, I don't know. It's, yeah, I certainly if felt that my MCL was gone or, or torn. Uh, I did my other one last year, so I knew the feeling. And then um, had pretty much had the whole week at home uh, in ice. And then, um, yeah, come in the week of the final on Monday to start some rehab and was able to, able to do more than, um, than the actual rehab I was doing. So I was doing a bit of jogging, running around, and then physios sort of pushed off. Can, you reckon you can do a few line-out jumps and start running. And then, um, yeah, made the call and got help through the week and made it to the grand final. And, yeah, I think, I suppose anyone else who was injured at that point would, would have wanted to play as well, so it was nothing different. And then, and then two tough tests against England as well. Like, it wasn't like you said, OK, Super Rugby final, yeah. I'll recover now. Two tough tests against England, so yeah. you, you must actually be quite enjoying a bit of a break, are you? Yeah, it was a good break. Obviously, the boys went over to San Diego and... I stayed back to freshen up and um, probably freshen up too well because it ended up with a calf tear. But um, yeah, feeling good, body's feeling good and just yeah, ready to go. Caleb, let's bring you in um, on the Super Rugby final. Obviously, the Blues have wanted this title for a long time. What, what, when you reflect back now on you know the grand final and the season as a whole, what do you think it was that, uh, that gave you the ability to get it done this time? Yeah, I think it was just... A mix of a lot of things, to be fair, um, starting with um, the players that had been around for such a long time. Um, you know, I'm sitting with Mark and Patty, and um, the three of us have been in the team sort of five plus years. And I think when we look back to those sort of harder times, we didn't have the sort of depth that we did back then um, with the players that had been around. So, yeah, I think that was sort of one thing that played a part. And then two, sort of Vern as well, um, gave us the style of play that um, he knew suited us. and. Um, once we sort of believed in it, um, we just ran with it and it took us probably, I'd say probably two to three rounds figuring it out and then after that sort of just, um, it just became natural to all of us to, to sort of what you saw and what we what we did out there and so yeah, after that it just came into, came in each day just having fun with all our mates and, and enjoying the process, um, whatever game we had, whatever occasion it was, Vern never um, sort of made it bigger than what it actually was. Um, sort of looking back at the final, I remember in the week he sort of said, play to the game, not the occasion. Um, it's just another game and it's just about us going through our process. And so, yeah, I think what you saw, not just the 23 that was out there on the field, but um, everyone that played a part in us sort of winning the whole thing was, everyone was just important as each other. And so, yeah, I think that's sort of reflecting back that's how it was. How did you feel about the game plan when he first presented it to you? Did you straight away think, okay, you're cool, even though it's mainly forward based? <laughs> no, it was actually like, it, was, it took a little bit, bit of time, eh? especially for us backs. Um, I remember a couple of trainings early in the year, he fully stopped us if we were running through team stuff and he said, no, not like that, go back and do it again. And um, we were trying to play wide or, or do some fancy stuff that um, at the time wasn't necessary that we thought, oh, you know, like, no, we need to. But, um, you know, he stripped us right back to the, um, to the basics and showed us clips of when we were at our best as a team. and. Um, that's just sort of what we did, and we just ran with it. And Mark and I were pretty happy that we could get amongst it with the forwards. Um, you know, just even for myself, I was getting probably ten more ball carries than I would have compared to last year and the years before. So um, yeah, I think just really enjoyed it and had heaps of fun. You like it as well, Mark. Obviously, that you know the, the I guess you think about a backline move and it ends up with you guys out wide and scoring in the corner. But that wasn't the you know the necessarily the operational game plan for the yeah. Blues. Did you enjoy you know going in and looking for a bit of a work, sort of one-off running and that sort of thing? Yeah, of course. Um, I guess any time you can try and get involved as a winger nowadays is um is massive and 
also to help out our forwards, you know, we ask a lot from them, you know, it's not easy pushing moors and scrums and stuff like that and we're just chilling on the wing, you know, <laughs> waiting for the ball. So, you know, when the opportunity comes, you try and get involved as much as you can, so yeah. So how do you know when, I mean, I'm sure you know within the game plan, but you know, you always hear about, oh, look at that winger, he's looking for work. Yeah. I'm sure you're always looking for work. Yeah, yeah. When do you know when to look for work and actually when to stay where you are? <laughs> I guess um, it varies, you know, um, I guess if when your, your forwards are carrying and you've got good momentum, you know, you can try and pop up where you can. And yeah, I guess if, if you're hungry for it, you know, if you want to score some tries, like my mate did over here, yeah. Then um, I guess yeah, you just you just try and get off your wing and get involved. And there'll there'll be times where you don't. There'll be times where you do. And I think as a winger, you just have to find the best moment. Yeah. So ten tries, nine tries, right? I think in the Super Rugby. Ah, uh, mate, that's like a hundred tries. <laughs> <laughs> so do you, do you, like do you guys compete? I, I know it's a team game, but yeah. do you like? Uh, me personally, whatever gets us over the chalk, you know. To be honest, as a team. Um, I just uh, I just want our team to win for me and then whoever's scoring scoring you know you can have um, our team having the most of try assist and not getting any credit for it but you know at the end of the day we're all there at the winning you know so that's how I see it I don't know how you, how do you see it bro no you got 10 tries 9 tries you got Hoss got 12 so it doesn't, <laughs> doesn't really matter so. true whatever gets you across the chalk yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but I didn't check your try stats Fatty um <laughs> Would have been a couple, surely. You always pop up, you know, there or thereabouts. What were your, what were your Blues try stats this year? I don't think I scored. I don't think you I missed scored. a couple of games, eh? So, you know, that's yeah. probably an excuse. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I don't think I scored. <laughs> okay. I'd, I'd happily good. take zero tries, one championship, though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Too much. Yeah. Um, you've been around this team for a, a decade now. Um, the All Blacks I'm talking about now. Uh, but, but, yeah, yeah. Um, but different, though, no... Sam Whitelock, no Brody Retallick anymore. That's a heck of a lot of experience to come out. Uh, have you felt the need to to step into a greater leadership role in the second row and in the forwards in particular without those two there? Um, probably haven't felt the need to. It's sort of just happened, you know. Uh, those are two pretty big um, personalities or leaders in this game or in this team, and um, I'm not going to come in here and try do what they did, you know, I'm going to come here and be myself, so there's aspects of um, what I've learned over the years uh, that I can bring in terms of my, my own leadership style and that's probably more around just serving the team. Uh, I probably won't talk much but I'll be out there helping out and, and trying to do my best to, to serve everyone uh, where I can, so yeah, I suppose that's the beauty of sort of a new coaching uh, and management staff as well. Uh, they're giving us free reign to, to do what, what we want in terms of leadership and I think most of the young, or most of the leadership group now is, is quite young and, and new. Tell us about uh, Sam Derry um, coming into the All Blacks. Um, yeah. Thought he was good on Saturday night, you know, yeah. it doesn't seem like he's overawed by it at all. What's, um, <laughs> yeah, what have you assessed his, um, his immersion into, into the All Blacks quite early in his career obviously, but what do you, have you, have you yeah. assessed that? Nah, he's been awesome eh? I feel like a proud dad talking about <laughs> Sam Derry. Yeah. Um, you know, I probably, I remember the first time I met him, sort of trying to get him to sign for Auckland, all the Blues, and then uh, when he actually signed, I was pretty happy, and then just to see his growth, I mean, in the last year or two, he's probably become a man, I'd say, just in terms of... He's become a what, sorry? <laughs> <laughs> just in terms of how he's playing, you know, he's just, he, he's <laughs> probably developed more in the last two years, um, he's, he's in the tough stuff, getting physical, he scored more tries than me this year. So. Yeah, well, true. You got, yeah, yeah, I'm glad I brought that up. <laughs> yeah, um, but can you, can you, like I say, can you tell when a guy comes in, a new guy, especially in the, you know, in the in the tight five, can you tell pretty quickly whether they're going to have what it takes to first fit in the Blues environment, then, but then potentially also make that next step? Can you tell? Yes and no. And I, I suppose in the case of Sam Derry, um, when he's come into the ABs camp, he's contributed right from the start. He hasn't held back, and um, that's probably the most pleasing thing to see. Uh, he's not scared to contribute and, and put his hand up where he can, because uh, whatever he contributes is probably worth a lot. Well, I know it's worth a lot in terms of being in the line-out group and running the cutter around the forward stuff. Speaking of running the cutter, Caleb, Harry Plummer. Um, I know he's a guy who's held in huge regard in the Blues environment. Um, and I think, that, you know, there was, I don't know whether there was a shift or not, but everyone, I think, was really impressed with the way he, he guided you guys around uh, when he was in the 10 jumper. 
Uh, he, he's got an opportunity in the All Blacks now as well. You, I guess, presumably knew that he had what it takes to, to really be a top, top player? Yeah, definitely. And, um, you know, for myself, I've been playing alongside Has, playing against Has since school, uh, since we were sort of like 12, 13 years old. And so it's pretty awesome getting to um, journey through our sort of rugby career together and seeing him where he is now is, is real cool because in the the start of our sort of professional careers, he, he had it quite tough. Um, sort of the 2019, 2018 season, I know for him it wasn't his um, his most memorable. So seeing him to where he is now, just, you know, like like Paddy said, the growth that he's shown um, has just been, been real cool. And also with him getting to do with his dad alongside him, um, Mark, um, who's a physio at the Blues, it's just, and this Mark too. <laughs> but, um, you know, just getting to getting to see you know his potential and you know finally what we saw especially in school I can remember playing him and we'd be like don't get a penalty inside our half because you just kick it um, <laughs> but just seeing him and um, seeing his growth just seeing the Harry Plummer that we all know and finally New Zealand starting to see it, it's just just real pleasing to see. How do you guys go because there are guys in the Blues who make the All Blacks there are guys in the Blues who get called into the All Blacks there are guys who probably think you know have designs on being an All Black and who aren't um, look at Hoskins for example uh, Finlay's not in the latest squad how do you ma- how do you manage that dynamic of, of you know of being disappointed for the guys who aren't there but also being part of this All Blacks team environment which is a higher beast again yeah I think it's just the balance is like we're all human and we all we all feel for our friends especially our brothers that didn't make it like you mentioned and so um, I think it's just taking it one step at a time um, sort of when the initial squad got announced and we were messaging Hoss and talking to him and I know I wouldn't be the only one as well um, to sort of reach out to see how he's doing and um, even with Finlay now so yeah it's just about taking it one step at a time and um, after sort of reaching out and making sure they're good it's parking there and then remembering that we have a job to do as well. It's a pretty um, competitive bunch of back three players at the moment isn't it Mark you know obviously you two and then Sevu, Will Jordan's coming back, uh, you know, Stevie Perifetta, uh, Bodhi. Um, how does the dynamic work, work in an All Blacks environment when everybody wants to play, but you want what's best for this team? I guess, um, you know, you, com- you compete, you know, everyone's competitive. And um, you know, when it comes to selections, you know, the coach pick who, who's performing the best. And, you know, we all support each other on whoever's selected, whoever's playing in the position. And I guess that's the, I guess that's what we, want out of each other the best so every time we're training whatever it looks like um, demanding so much from each other and you know whoever puts their best foot forward is the player to get the position and if the coach selects them and I know all the boys in our team are similar you know in whatever position it is and um, you know you got Will coming back now and Sebs is playing good and so like the competition's there and you still got Caleb here as well so you know everyone's hungry for it and whoever gets it gets it and I guess that's what keeps us all honest. And as me as a player, you know, you can't, there's nothing you wouldn't, you know, want to, I guess, put under the rug. You know, you want to do everything right and take the opportunity you can, so yeah. You were um, awarded Breakthrough Player of the Year last year. Um, it almost suggests that you weren't that good before, but you're good now, but I'm sure that's not the case. You've always been good, haven't you? You've always, <laughs> have you always felt as though you were able to make the step to, to the All Blacks, not just, you know, um, in one year like that? Nah. Uh, <laughs> It came with um, a lot of um, a lot of hard work, a lot of um, work um, behind the scenes, and I guess you know the time that you spend where people don't really see. I guess that's what you build your character, you know, the resilience that you have to keep grinding for the goals that you desire. And I guess um, my journey was a long one, not a fast one. So um, I give it to the people that helped me, supported me through my journey, and for them to see me here now, you know. We can all, you know, celebrate together, but the you know, job's not finished. We're, we're still going and enjoying the journey with my brothers as well. So, yeah. Is your middle name Evander? Is that ev- after Evander Holyfield? Uh, look at him, he's doing his research. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, his actual, yeah, yeah. Is it after the boxer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get out. Yeah. So, watch out, mate. <laughs> same here. Yeah, same Ah, yeah, yeah. uh, caught me off guard with that one. <laughs> oh, so they should have given you the first name, Evander Talia. That's a that's a name. Nah, Mark's better. Mark's better. All right, Griffle, all right. All right. <laughs> hey, Peter, can I bring you back in again? Um, you know, you guys have been around uh, professional rugby. You know, you can't win every game. What's the Monday after an All Blacks loss like? 
yeah, pretty. Well, I suppose Sunday's pretty tough. You know, um, we're all hurting in the training sheet after, but you know, there's another game to play in uh, seven days. So yeah, you can be sad, you can be down, um, but come Monday you got to be ready to take the hit and find find ways to get better. And so today or Mondays are usually pretty tough. You know, you, you got to look at each other and come up with solutions together, but at the same time um, demand greatness. And part of that is telling your mate that he wasn't good enough or, or telling the coach he wasn't good enough, you know. So that's a collective effort and after that's done you usually feel pretty energised and then after a good Monday like that then you head in, you're starting your week well, you head into Tuesday uh, fresh and feeling good, ready to, ready to go again. So do you, when, when that review takes place, do you know what's coming? I mean I'd imagine you know, right, well, well, I know you weren't there on Saturday night playing necessarily but do, can you think, okay, he's going to say that wasn't good enough. We need to do that better. And this over here, it could, like, yeah. do you know? I think yeah. I think in the this day and age of professional sports, um, us being professional athletes, we we know the game we play, and yeah, we have, sort of have an inkling of, of what's coming. But at the same time, you, you're working together as coach with coaches um, through Sunday, Monday, to to get the messaging right. Um, so leaders obviously meet and they'll meet with coaches to make sure that they're not going to stand up at the front of the classroom and just belt you, you know? Yeah. Um, it's got to be constructive and, and um, everyone's got to be able to take the feedback at the same time. Yeah. Is there a degree of nervousness? I, I, I don't know, maybe um, when you first came into the team, for example, and, you know, did, was there a degree of trepidation about what the review might <laughs> provide with, with all, your, all your teammates there? Yeah, I mean, I, I never liked school and <laughs> if you, you get the teacher standing up there asking you, asking the classroom a certain question and everybody, everything's quiet, it sort of gets like that sometimes yeah. and that's a spot you don't want to be in but um, you know, we all got a job to do and that's part of the review process to, to get better so there's levels of that um, but that'll change every, every now and again. Mm. Caleb, they, another cliche here a lot is, is you win or you learn um, and I'm sure you learn a lot from your defeats but can you learn from wins as well? I mean you guys, the Blues, let's go back to that. Only two losses, one down Hurricanes, lost to the Crusaders. Can you still learn as you're winning and winning well? Yeah, definitely. I think those are the, the best learnings you can get, is, um, especially from a win. People always think about your learnings are from a loss where you always think about the bad things. But um, for us at the Blues, we always just focus on what we can do better and um, you know, look at what we did well. But yeah, it's all just about getting better. And it's no different here as well. You know, all those games prior, the England, the Fiji games, you know, we learnt from those as well, so um, it's just about now building into into the next RG. Does your dad still give you plenty of advice, hey, Ronnie? He tries to, <laughs> no, um, he, he does, and it's still cool getting to, um, I just moved back home recently again, and um, after any sort of game that I've played, going home and watching it together and talking through what, what was sort of going through my mind at certain times, it's, it's still pretty cool, and um, just seeing the eagerness that he has as a father, um, just to, to see his family doing well and then also as a coach to, or as an old rugby player to to know what's what I was thinking and what I was wanting to try and do so yeah it's, it's pretty special. He was a player man mm. I, I mean you obviously I mean that's right bang in the 90s was you know my rugby awareness you know he was a player yeah. but when did when did you realize how good he was as a you knew your dad played rugby but when did it become apparent to you how good he was? Well to be fair I didn't actually know much about rugby growing up and so I remember being in primary school, it's probably my second second to last year or last year of primary where I was in the library looking at this all black book and saw my dad in it and I was just like, <laughs> took it home and I was like, dad, this is you, oh my gosh. And so I was just like, man, going around, my dad was an all black, my dad was an all black, that's so crazy. And um, just sort of that's when it sort of realised like, oh man, that's so cool. And then all the tapes that I'd sort like seen growing up was, that was the blues, that was the all blacks. Um, the people that I would call uncle were, were great to the game and so it's just just real cool and pretty special and um, I owe a lot to my my family and, and how we grew up and so um, just nowadays it's just about giving back and making sure I can do the same for what they did for us. Mark how do you deal with the glare of being an all-black even being a, a blues player you know you can't walk around without being recognized none of you can mm. you know how do you how do you deal with it? I'm quite easy um, 
Just stay home. <laughs> yeah, just stay home. <laughs> stay in my room. <laughs> nah, yeah, I'm quite, I'm quite easy. I've, but if I'm out and about, um, I always, you know, share the love back to the people, you know, that are saying hi or recognize you. Um, it comes with um, the sport that we play. And mostly being in New Zealand is quite small. Everyone kind of knows already, you know. Mostly me, you see a bald head, you're like, ah, just, nah. <laughs> nah, it's not that funny, <laughs> don't laugh like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I hear you. But nah, yeah, so, uh, I'm quite easy, I'm chill, I'm chill. I don't know about the other boys. Caleb loves it though. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but do you ever get mistaken for anybody else? They say, oh, there's, I don't know, sure, Wallace Atiti or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Wallace Atiti. <laughs> Uh, we're from no hair to heaps of hair. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, I don't get mistaken for yeah. much, to be honest. Nah, yeah, not me. Yeah, and I'd be keen for, from Ollie because like everybody in New Zealand's got an opinion on the All Blacks, right? Mm. And and now has the means. I you mean, know, think about Ronnie's day. Mm. If someone had a, you know, it was really just. I guess they might have run talkback radio, but they couldn't put anything online. Yeah. Anybody with a smartphone and internet connection can, you know, can put whatever they like out there, seemingly without any repercussions for them. Um, do you read it? How do you deal with it? What's the strategy you use, Mark? Yeah, I'm quite easy. I don't read it. Yeah. Um, don't read it. Uh, don't feed into it, to be honest. Um, you know, like things happen in life and that's the sport that we play, you know, comes wins and losses. Um, as a team, as a collective, you know, we'll do better. We'll do better for ourselves, our teammates, mostly for the people that we represent. You know, we still got what, seven days to prep for another game, so we'll look forward to it. Get excited for the challenge. You know, head into it. Love it. Is it the same with you, Caleb? Is there like a, a circle of people whose opinions do matter, and anybody outside that, you just it's just white noise? Yeah, pretty much. Um, you have the people you trust, which would start with family, coaches, uh, your teammates. Um, sort of the ones that I do feel sorry for, because you know, us players we probably won't look into. Um, reading comments or anything like that, but it'll be other family members that sort of go in and see it. Um, having to go and tell them, like, oh, like, don't react to that. Like, people have their own opinions, they're entitled to it, but, um, you know, when they see people attacking, like, us as people, as us as players, your family are the ones that get hurt, not really us. So um, that's probably the other side that people don't re sort of realise. But, uh, like Mark said, you know, it, it comes with the sport and um, you just have to have your trust in your circle and... You have to tell your family, especially, no, no, just relax, just relax, don't worry about what they're saying. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, but I think any, any nana wants to protect their mm. grandson, right? It's just, it's, yeah. it's natural, but as you say, it's probably a bit different in your case. I mean, we're not getting, you know, a normal person in the street isn't getting people just firing stuff at them. Do you yeah, get nervous watching, do you get nervous, <laughs> do you get nervous watching Phoenix play netball? Do you, like, is that a nervous time for you? No, I love watching it, eh? She, like, it, I don't know. I never thought netball was really physical until I watched her play. It is now, man. Eh? It's seeing her it live. Like yeah. It's, yeah, it's pretty. What's the word? Yeah, intense. You know. Um, but yeah, don't get nervous. She's pretty strong. She can hold her own. Yeah. So. Did she get? Didn't she get a two-minute simbin in the final? Recently? Yeah, she did. Yeah. yeah. Were you, you, that was in Wellington. That was in Wellington. So you wouldn't have been. Were you there? No, we were at camp. Oh, you camp. camp. Yeah. 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 What did she do? I think she knocked someone over going for the ball. Oh. Yeah. You told me there. Yeah. I need to ask you one more question, and that's about Eden Park. Um, you know, you all know the the, the fortress. 1994 was the last time. Um, does that motivate you, Patrick? Does it? Is there extra pressure that you don't want to be in the team that lost at Eden Park? How, how does that play into your preparation? No, I, I've always seen Eden Park as home. So it's you know, to me, the fortress is just the name. I, just love playing there, you know. Um, yeah, I don't know. It must be pretty scary for other teams, but I suppose for us, we feel pretty comfortable there, and um, we certainly feel the love whenever the All Blacks are playing there because it's always sold out. So yeah, yeah. I can't wait for set, yeah, can't wait for Saturday. Got to wrap it up, guys. Patrick, Caleb, Mark, really appreciate your time. Thanks so much. Awesome. Thank you. Cheers. Yeah, yeah,